Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of the Honeybird Studio podcast. My name is Jenny, and I'm coming to you from the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada. You can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Honeybird Studio. This is a podcast primarily about knitting and sometimes some other fiber related endeavors that I might be getting up to, which today I have one crochet project, but the rest of everything else is knitting. So yeah. Um, so welcome to any new viewers who are joining me for the first time today. So glad to have you here. So happy to have you check out my channel. And also welcome back to those of you who are returning viewers. I'm always so happy to see you guys again. Um, yeah, so today is, I wouldn't say like, well actually no, it is kind of jam packed because I have quite a few. It's been a little bit since I last recorded. I think it's I think it was the beginning of August is when I last recorded and I just got, I got so busy through the month that I wasn't able to record again. So here I am. What was it like four weeks later? <laughs> yeah. So glad to be back. Um, yeah. So today I'm going to jump right into the knitting. Uh, I'll leave the admin and the giveaway winners to the end of the episode. So if you're interested in, in that stick around to the end of the episode, but yeah, so let's jump into it. Uh, let's start with what I'm wearing because what I'm wearing is something super exciting. I finally finished my tassel, uh, well, I was going to say finally finished. I finally finished this tassel tango and I have another tassel tango to show, but this one is my grande, grande size tassel tango. So this is the biggest size that's in the pattern. So I'll take it off so I can show you. It is quite, quite large. So I think the wingspan is like 70 something inches. But yeah, so this is, this is the color, this is the, um, technically the, the wrong side, even though there's, there's no wrong side to this pattern. Both sides are beautiful. So this is the side that has the contrast colors as the dominant colors. Doesn't that look so cool? It's so awesome. I'm so excited about this. And then this side, the main color, the, the black is the dominant color, but you can see it's kind of like a, like a moody rainbow on this side. It's so cool. And then on this side, it's more of a bright rainbow. You can't really see it, but there is gold Stellina in here as well. It might, oh yeah, you can kind of see it on. So the contrast colors are all gold Stellina. The yarn that I used for this is from Hidden Pond Yarns. And I will, oh yeah, links, all the links to everything I talk about today will be in the description box below. But yeah, and this one has 102 tassels. So you see all the tassels from this end oh my gosh all the way all the way to this end 102 <laughs> it's quite the endeavor to make these tassels I, i'll tell you my test knitters also were like oh my goodness those tassels what a chore <laughs> i mean in a good way it really i mean it's kind of the one of the I guess, well, I mean, the tassel, the whole point of this shawl is the tassels, hence the name Tassel Tango. Um, if you are new and don't know, uh, the Tassel Tango actually has a interactive element to it, which is like, yeah, I, I think it's a, a bit of a wild idea, but I think it's really cool. Or I think like, it'd be cool to see it implemented. Um, like my my, what is it? My inspiration basically for the shawl was to have something that can be used as like an icebreaker, um, at like knit nights or knitting events, like knitting festivals, like knit cities coming up in October. So I'm going to be wearing this there. <laughs> so anyways, the interactive element is the tassels are actually removable. So you can actually take the tassels off. I'll show you here. Um, there we go. So each tassel, each individual tassel will come off. Oh, it's been on there for a while, but yeah, you can see it's got a loop on there. Oh, my focus, maybe, maybe not. But in any case, the tassels are removable. So where did I just get this from? Right here. So you can take them off and you can trade them with another person, which I think is, <laughs> I think it's pretty exciting. Um, so, I mean, if, if you see another person that has a tassel tangle shawl, like, like I said, like at a knit night or a yarn festival or fiber festival, um, you could be like, Hey, you want to trade tassels? <laughs> I think that would be pretty awesome. But yeah, so this one, this one is the, the biggest size. So this one I've called the grande tassel tango. Um, the other finished object, 
Oh yeah, I think I forgot to say it. Like, okay, so this is what I'm wearing, which is also a finished object. And my next finished object is another Tassel Tango. And this one is um, the petite size. So it's the smallest one. So let me just take this off real quick. So this one is, I think the wingspan was just shy of 50 inches or so. So this is the, the main side or like the right side. So you see more of the main color, which is the, the vanilla, the white, or it's, yeah, it's undyed vanilla. And then on the other side, it's got the contrasting colors. So the yarn that I used for this one is from Midnight Cravings. And I used their undyed vanilla in the light sock base. And then I got one of their five skein mini sets called BC Orchards, which I thought was pretty fitting because I live in BC. So I couldn't pass that up. I love the colors. They're super nice. But yeah, and then I've got, uh, how many tassels does this one have? Uh, 79 tassels on this one, if I remember correctly. So I did all the contrast colors. I ran out, I used up all of the main color, so I didn't have any left over for tassels, but I had plenty of the contrast colors to make my tassels. And I had just a little bit left over. So this one, if you are more into smaller shawls and not, not big ones like that one, <laughs> you can always make the petite tassel tango. So uh, there we go. Get my hair out of the way. But yeah. So there's a, yeah. So tassels again are removable. You can take the tassel off and trade it with another person. And like the whole idea is basically or at least for me, what I would like to do is re is eventually trade all the tassels off of my, of one of my tassel tangos. Um, I think it's going to be this one. As much as I don't want to part with the, <laughs> with the tassels, I, I really think it would be really cool to have all different color tassels from other people's shawls. Um, but yeah, so this one is the, the smallest size. So I brought, um, oh yeah. I did bring two other ones. So I'll show you the classic, which is the medium size. And this was the, the reason why I call it the classic is because it's the original one that I made. Um, and this one is made out of Polka Dot Creek. So this, so this is the main or like the, the right side. Uh, so the main color is more dominant. Again, I used undyed, uh, I used their undyed sock yarn and then on the contrast color side, I picked out eight minis. Yeah, I picked out eight minis kind of co um, coordinating ones. So I chose like a dark blue green and then a light blue green and then a dark purple, a light purple, a dark pink, a light pink, and then an orange and a yellow. And I think this one's got 93 tassels on it. So you can see all the tassels. I kind of just paired all the, the colors together. So you see like the dark pink with the light pink and a white and the dark purple with the light purple and the white. So, and I still had lots of, I still have quite a bit. Well, I wouldn't say quite a bit, but I have enough left over to make even more tassels if I want to make more to trade. <laughs> but yeah, so this one I think has a wingspan of uh, maybe 60, 60 inches or so. So this one, if you're into, if you don't want a very large shawl and you don't want a very small shawl, but you want something in between, then you can do the classic size. And of course I've, I, I'm, I've been putting these all on with the, with the contrast color showing, but you can decide, depending on how you feel, you can wear it either way. So you can have like a more subdued color palette going on by wearing the main color or like the right side out. So you can see how it's like a little bit more toned down. The colors aren't as like, you know, vibrant, but it still looks really nice. Like, especially with my, with my Grande Tassel Tango with the black and the rainbow, I think looks really cool on the, uh, on both sides, really. So that, so that, yeah, so that's the classic size. And then <laughs> I did knit, I did knit another, um, petite Tassel Tango because I really like the combination of black yarn with, uh, contrast colors. Um, this yarn I got from Knit City. Oh, I want to say maybe like three or four years ago. I believe this was Seawall Fibers. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they do yarn anymore 
or if they're still doing it or if they're, if they're on a break. Because the last time I checked their website and their Instagram, it didn't look like they had been updated in a while. But yeah, so this one, I really like this one too because I used, uh, what is it, five contrast colors and then the, the main color was the black. And so I used one of each color in the tassels, if you can see there. So like this one, I get this one's a petite tassel tangle, but this one's slightly bigger than the one from Min the yarn that I used for Midnight Cravings because this is a uh, Midnight Cravings was more of a plump fingering weight yarn, and then this one it was a a lighter fingering weight yarn. So it yeah, it just ended up being a little bit bigger, I guess. I used the same needle, same needle size for all of them. Oops, there we go. So yeah, so that's my my four completed tassel tangos that I've completed over the summer. Um, yeah, the classic was the first one I completed and then this one and then my grande and then my, my other petite, but uh, yeah, I'm going to put this one back on cause it's fun. <laughs> I just love the colors. Oh my gosh. Hidden Pond Yarns. If you have not checked out her shop, Katya has such a good eye for color palettes. She sells mini skein sets of, I think, this one was a 10 skein mini set and I think she's got even like 12 skein mini sets and the colors are just gorgeous. <laughs> like I can't, I can't express enough like how obsessed I am with her color palettes. But yeah, so I'm already dreaming up another, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of burnt out on the tassels. <laughs> I'll admit uh, after making 350 some odd tassels, I'm kind of, uh, I'm burnt out for now, but I, I, I will be making more. Uh, I have another tassel tango on the needles, but I haven't worked on it in a, in a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so that is my, all my tassel tangos. Um, oh, and on that note, the pattern is releasing on Tuesday, which I believe is the same day that this podcast will be going live. Um, so I think uh, sometime in the morning, sometime around 10 o'clock, I think is when I'm going to be hitting publish on the pattern. And for the first two weeks, it'll be discounted, uh, 25% discount. So until, so from September 7th, I think that's the Tuesday that, yeah, that's this Tuesday until September 21st, uh, midnight is the pattern will be on sale for 25% off. No coupon code needed. It'll be taken off in the checkout. I think that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get your hands on the Tassel Tango shawl, um, like I said, I think when this podcast goes live is also when the pattern is going to go live. Fingers crossed I get this edited in time. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I still have a little bit, like as of right now, there's still a couple of things that I need to get done. Uh, just a few more notes that I need to add to the pattern. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Oh, I need to take a couple more pictures because I wasn't able to because the weather was kind of not the greatest lately. But yeah, my test knitters have, I think pretty much all of them have completed the the shawl at this point. And I've seen pictures of uh, quite a few of them and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I just, I, I'm like beside myself. I'm so like in awe of everyone's tassel tangos, the, the color palettes and like the, the photos. I'm just, yeah, super excited. I like ugh, the words I can't even, <laughs> but yeah, so that is that. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. Ah, okay. That's enough gushing about that. Let's move on to, um, so these were finished objects. I don't have any more completed objects, but I have two almost finished objects and they're sitting in front of me. So the first one living in my little sweet treat, well, my little, my, my, well, it's a good size bag. It fits a sweater in it. It living in my sweet treats bag here is my Felix pullover. And this is a pattern by Amy Christoffers. So I say it's almost done because the knitting part is done. I just haven't woven in any of the ends. As you can see, I've kind of just left them hanging out. Oh, I guess this is the, this is the front here. But yeah, so this is, uh, this is showing up way more blue, like way more bright blue on the camera than it is in person. It's more of a green blue than it is a blue blue. <laughs> um, but yeah, the yarn that I used is, I believe diamond luxury 
Merino Supreme Aaron. And I used exact like pretty much exactly four balls. I think there's like very little left over. The last time that I showed this to you, I think I was working on one of the sleeves and I had put some of the body on an afterthought lifeline. So it wasn't quite long enough to be like a long sweater and it wasn't short enough to be a crop sweater. It was kind of in that weird in between. So I decided what I would was going to do was I was just going to finish the sleeves and then whatever yarn I had left over, I would knit the body until I ran out of yarn. And then I tried it on and I like the length now. Um, I believe once I block it, this yarn tends to grow a little bit. So once I block it, I think it'll be even slightly a little bit more longer. Oh, right. And then the modification that I did to this pattern was I didn't do any decreases in the sleeves. I tend not to. I, I that's like my preference. Uh, I don't think there were, I, I, ugh. I think there were decreases in the sleeve in the pattern, but I'm not sure. Once I get to the sleeves, I kind of just do my own thing. <laughs> I stop reading and I just do my own thing. And then the other modification is I continued the eyelet pattern down the side of the, down the side of the sweater. And that's just a continuation of the eyelets that are up there. But yeah, so I'm uh, eventually going to get around to weaving in the ends. I'm just like, I just want to knit right now. I don't, I don't want to have to fuss around with knit, uh, weaving in ends as much as I want to wear the sweater. Um, but I think we still have some I think we're still going to have some warm weather for some time, so not in too much of a rush. Although I did take out all of my knit sweaters and I'm actually quite surprised at how many sweaters I have knit or like how many like knit shirts, like t-shirts and sweaters that I've knit since last year. I think it was last spring or last summer was the first sweater I ever knit. And I think I've got like at least a dozen now. I've knit quite a few, which is surprising. Um, but yeah, so that's my almost finished object number one. My almost finished object number two is a simple hug cardi. And I can blame Bobby of the Inspired Knitting Podcast for this one because she recently finished a simple hug cardi. And it's been a pattern that I... Oh yeah, it's Simple Hug Cardi by Cozy Up Knits. And it's ever since that pattern was released, I've wanted to knit it. But I just... I don't know, I just never got around to it. And then when I saw Bobby knit it have it knit on her podcast and I saw it on her Instagram too I was like oh my gosh okay I think I'm sold I need to she she even said she she knit it really quickly and boy I tell you like this knit up super fast I didn't use the yarn recommended in the in the pattern um this is actually for my niece uh I took her to Michael's and I let her pick out some yarn so she picked out her color palette and she wanted green and yellow stripes so this is I didn't even do a swatch. I just picked a size and went with it. In hindsight, I probably should have gone down a size. It is a bit oversized, but I think oversized is totally fine. But yeah, so this is, this is it. Now I say it's almost finished. I've, we, I've woven in all of the ends except for four of them. Now I see the, my niece likes long sleeves. And so I knit long sleeves. However, I knit it too long. So what I'm going to do is sometime today or tomorrow, oh no, maybe not today or tomorrow. I've got some other things to do, but sometime this week, I'm going to take out this yellow and this green. And then, yeah, I'm going to finish it off on the green because the yellow, it's, it's just a bit long. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you. Like if I have this on, oh no, when it's actually on, it's about that long. It comes way over the, the fingers she likes her sleeves to be about like that. So yeah, so taking out this yellow and ending it on the green should, should be the right length of a sleeve. The yarn that I used is, oh, really inexpensive uh, yarn from Michaels. I think it was, what's the brand? Uh, Craft Smart Value. I think it's like $4 a ball or $4 a skein or whatever. And I bought two of each color uh, I only had to dip into the yellow. I, I did more, I used more of the green than I did the yellow. I think I only used a little, I used a, one skein of each color and then a little bit of the yellow and then 
a bit more of the green in the second skein. So I have enough left over that I think I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make my niece a matching hat or I mean, she doesn't have to wear them together. It might be too matchy matchy, but I, I'm thinking of making a color work hat or I don't think I want to, I don't know. I'll ask her and see if she wants a striped hat or if she wants an all green hat or all yellow. It's really up to my niece, whatever she wants, I'll knit for her. So I'm pretty excited about, about this. Um, yeah, like, and oh, I knit this up. I started it on, I cast it on on Friday night last weekend and I cast it off on Monday morning. And I, I pretty much, I worked on this monogamously for the entire weekend. <laughs> so it is a very quick knit. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's super, yeah, like it's in the name, Simple Hug Cardi. It's a super simple cardigan that, uh, and yeah, I am knitting another one. So I'll, I'll show that in my works of progress. But yeah, so that's that. So that's two almost finished objects. And then moving into works in progress on the note of the simple hug cardi, I've got another one on the needles here. Um, let's see, this one is for my sister, for my younger sister. Let's see if I can get it out of the bag here. Um, so I cast this one on a couple of days ago and I've done, I guess, I've done quite a bit of work on it. It's just pretty mindless knitting back and forth. So it's uh, starts from the bottom up. So I did, pretty sure I did the ribbing longer than it says to in the pattern. I just like a longer rib. Um, but yeah, so the whole thing, this is all going to be burgundy. Um, I'm going to make it, this one, I made this one a smaller size. I made the smaller size because I still think it's going to be oversized because it's not that much smaller, I don't think. But in any case, I think it's going to fit my sister just fine. The yarn that I'm using for this one is Lion Brand Pound of Love. So I basically got it, I think I used a coupon um, and it's regular $12 and I got it 30% off. So I paid like under $10 for it. And I think I'm, I'll definitely have enough to finish this cardigan. So I think, you know, yes, it's acrylic. However, um, you know, it's not, I don't know. I don't mind knitting with acrylic. Like if I'm knitting for, especially like if I'm knitting for other people who aren't really um, like aware of how to take care of knitted, uh, like wool garments. Um, so I find it's, it's less heartbreaking to knit something out of acrylic for someone to throw in the wash and the dryer um, and then not have it felt. So, <laughs> cause I, that's my, my concern is that like if I knit something out of wool for someone even though I tell them don't put it in the wash or like, don't put it in the dryer. I have a fear. Like I've heard of stories from other people gifting things to people and then them accidentally putting it in the wash and then it becomes felted. And then it's like, Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't mind like when I'm knitting for other people using acrylic yarn, it's easy to take care of. So yeah. But yeah, so that's an another simple hug cardi that I'm sure I'll finish maybe in the next couple of weeks or so, I guess. But yeah, so that's that. I've, I've got like, I've got all this up here and bags of works in progress down here as well. Um, let's see, what's the next thing? I guess the next thing I'll show is my weekender because I did do some work on it. Not, I mean, there's not much, really not a whole lot. So this is the weekender by Andrea Mowry. And I think, yeah, so this is where I was last time where that marker is. So I've knit maybe like two inches, maybe just over two. Um, I talked about this yarn, um, was it last time or the time before? This is Queensland Collection Leche. So that's the... <sighs> so this yarn gave me quite a bit of a headache um, in the sense that I think I'm on my fourth ball now, but if you can tell here, there are so many ends that I'm going to have to weave in because each of the first three balls that I used, I think had at least three joins each, which was really frustrating. 
which is why I put this project down for such a long time because I really wasn't looking forward to like working with this yarn. Even though I like like I like working with the yarn, it is nice. It has a nice feel to it. I was not looking forward to having to deal with more joins. And so what I did was I finally I took the rest of the balls that I had or the rest of the skeins and I wound I hand wound all of them. And so these are all of the joins that I had in the balls. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, so out of, I think I had eight more balls. There were seven, seven. So it equaled out to like maybe one join for the rest of the, I, I guess I just got really unlucky with the first three balls because they each had, like I said, three joins. And then when I hand wound the rest of them, I think three of them had no joins and then the other ones only had one join. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the balls that have the most weight to them or like the most yardage. And I'm going to use those ones first before I, if I, and hopefully I don't have to dip into the, the other ones, but basically I was just hoping to have the yardage go a little bit further. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, there's a, uh, like I said, it, it's just, I'm just working in the round right now. I think I still have, uh, I think I have a few more inches to go before I separate for the front and back. And then, uh, yeah, this is another knit that I'm making for my younger sister. Um, again, not, not super in a rush to get it, but I think I would like to finish the weekender first before I finish the simple hug cardi. Cause I think she'll, well, I don't know. I did. <laughs> yeah. Like I was just saying the simple hug cardi is made out of acrylic. So like my sister will be able to like just throw it in the wash and not have to worry about it. This, on the other hand, I think even though the label says you can wash it, I'm still, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm still kind of like, you know, I, I told her like, if you need to wash this, just bring it to me and I'll hand wash it for you. So, <laughs> yeah. But anyways, so that's the weekender. I've, yeah, done a little bit of work on it, but not much. Um, next thing, what have I got here? What is in each of my bags? Um, I guess I'll start with this one. So in here, I have a sweater that I cast on a couple days ago. I wanted, I found, I was going through my stash and I found some, uh, some yarn. This is the Ashford DK. I had two balls of this brown. And then I had one ball of like a beige color and one of a mustard yellow. And what I did was I cast on, I don't know, a multiple of four, I suppose. And then I increased every four stitches. And then I did um, a color work. I, I have a, like a color work chart book or a book of color work charts. So I just kind of like went through and found the ones that were like in multiples of four or five or whichever it was. And I did that. And then I increased every five stitches and then I did another color work chart and then increased every six stitches. And then I did another one and then increased every seven stitches and so on and so forth. I, I measured it as I went and I did try it on and it does fit. I was originally wanting it to be a little bit over, not oversized, but just more positive ease. But when I tried it on, it's definitely negative ease. <laughs> So this is what happens when you just kind of wing it. Um, oh, that's the back. This is the front. So I, I also did short rows. I did some German short rows to kind of bring up the back there. Um, but yeah, so I kind of just kind of made it up as I went. Uh, like I said, I just kind of like looked at some color work charts and figured out which ones were in multiples of whatever, uh, whichever I had on each row. In hindsight, I probably could have gone up a needle size because it does look like it's puckering a little bit. But, uh, I don't know. It's just, I'm a process knitter. So, I mean, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I can maybe find some, well, I mean, it's, it fits, so I'll figure it out. I'll wear it. So, <laughs> um, I'm hoping once I block it, like once I soak it, it might relax the stitches a bit, but, um, yeah, I only have, I only had two balls of this yarn and this is all I have left of this brown. And I, would like to do the body in the sleeves, but I definitely don't have enough. So I went to the yarn shop downtown here and I, and they said that they can order it in. However, you know, with dye lots and stuff, different batches might be slightly different color. 
So I figure the worst case scenario is I finish the body on this and then what I could do is the ribbing in the like the next ball and then instead of doing long sleeves just go right into ribbing on these and make it a short sleeve top like I don't know make it a cropped short sleeve top or something I'm not sure but I, I will see how how far I get but I really like the color work on here I was pretty impressed that I I mean I didn't like come up with these like I said I have a color work chart book and I just kind of was looking for the ones that had the mul the right multiples of whichever number I had. So, yeah. It, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. I kind of, like I said, I kind of winged it. I don't know if it's, it. I mean, like I said, it does fit, but yeah, I just mostly winged it. <laughs> but it, it looks really cute. I really, I really like this, this color work in particular. But yeah, um, and also the, the Ashford DK, it's 100% New Zealand wool, uh, it's a DK weight, and it is a rustic, it, like it has a rustic feel to it, so it is a little bit prickly, but when I tried this on, it's oh, so, I don't know, like I, I guess I'm just, I always thought I had sensitive skin, but when it comes to wool, I guess not, because I've been wearing my, my cardigan that I made out of Briggs and Little yarn, and that's like a rustic wool as well. And I have no problems with my skin, no irritation or anything like that, no itchiness. So I guess I'm lucky. I don't have to worry about rustic wools irritating my skin. Um, but yeah, so that's living in this floral bag. Um, yeah, we'll see how, how far I get with it. Like I said, I ordered the, I had the yarn shop order the yarn for me. So it should be coming, or they're going to order it on Tuesday. So it should be coming in by the end of the week. So we'll see if it is a matching color or if it's off I don't know I'll if it's off like I said I'll figure it out I'll figure out something um, the next thing is living in this mermaid bag which I made a couple weeks ago I saw the fabric on clearance at Walmart and I couldn't pass it up I think it was two dollars for each I think they're called fat quarters um, and I need I needed two mermaid ones and then two of the fish ones so you can see there's fish on the inside it's so cute but yeah and I already had the zipper so I was like oh yeah I can make myself a new bag so this is like my medium size bag oh, like I have three different sizes that I've sewn did I say I knit them <laughs> that I've sewn um and let me just take that out three different sizes that I sew, uh, like a small, I consider them a small, medium, and large, even though the large isn't that large. It is large compared to the other ones. But anyways, so living in here is a woodstone cardigan. Uh, this, this design, I, I'm still scratching my head over trying to figure out how I'm going to write this design, write this pattern up. I don't know. I just don't know. Oops. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just not as, I'm just not experienced enough in garment design to figure out how to size these things because I would like to be size inclusive, but, um, this is, so this is the back. Uh, you can see like the lace and cable panel. And then on the, on the arms, I've got the, the cable panel running from the top down. Uh, so I've made quite a bit of progress on this. I haven't, I haven't touched it in a little while. Um, this is made out of, let's see, Michael's had a sale on their yarn quite a few weeks ago. This is Loops and Threads Baby Rainbow. And this is not acrylic. It is, it's something else. What is it? Oh, it's polyester. <laughs> it's super soft though. But yeah, so that's that. It's, um... When I first got it, I swore it looked more like a gray blue, but then like in, in this lighting, it looks more like a blue gray, but I bought it because the, the weight of this yarn is similar to the yarn that I want to use for the final pattern. Um, so I wanted to get some inexpensive yarn to test it out first before I purchased the luxury yarn, <laughs> but yeah, so this is. This is as far as I've gotten. Um, I've kind of put it down for a bit because I have other 
other more pressing designs to work on. Oh, and I had enough yarn left over. Oh my gosh, yarn. <laughs> I had enough uh, fabric left over that I was able to make this little notion pouch. A little mermaid notion pouch. And I've got, I think, some, yeah, just some knitting needles and cable needle and all that stuff in here. But yeah, super cute little mermaids on there. But yeah, so the Woodstone cardigan, like I said, I am still racking my brain over this one. Because I want to, I, I figured I could probably make it a bottom up uh, drop sleeve would be the easiest way to do it. But I like the shaping of the raglan. Like I like ra the raglan shaping better. So yeah, it's it just seems like that would be much more difficult considering the chart would start on different different areas or like it would start on different rows for different sizes. So I would have to do different charts. I mean, I'm willing to do the work. I just need to figure out exactly how to like wrap my mind around it basically. Um, but yeah, I think the next thing I will talk about is, um, oh, on the topic of Woodstone cardigan, um, the design that I'm going to be releasing in the next, uh, probably in October is my Woodstone wrap. So this one has the same, this will have the same chart for the cable, lacing cable. So you can see here, I've made quite a bit of progress. So this is where I'm at. This is how much I've done. I think I'm on the third, I'm on my third skein. The yarn that I'm using is Midnight Cravings Rustic Twist. And this is one of their, this is their new base that they just came out with, I think last month. I basically, uh, I, I follow them on Instagram and I've been watching that. I watch them post all the pictures of all the different colors. Well, there's five different colors of the Rustic Twist, or I think six, if you include the vanilla, I guess. Um, but I knew right away I wanted this for this design. It just, it was calling out to me and I knew this is what I needed. And this is what I want to use for the cardigan as well. Um, but yeah, so um, I ordered, I did the math and I figured I'd only need five skeins, but I ordered a six just to be sure. And I think, yeah, I'm going to have plenty of leftover because I'm, I want to make it, I think 70 inches long. And I think I'm more than halfway there. It's quite a bit. When I block it, I'm going to block it a bit aggressively because I want it to be quite wide. So I'm really excited to have this as a accessory for the winter. It's going to be super warm and super cozy. Um, but yeah, I'll talk more about this yarn and acquisitions because I have a couple to show off. Well, it's same color, but I'll get to that later. So yeah, so that's, it's just living in a thrift bag I got at a thrift store some time ago, quite a few years ago. Um, the next thing is living in a new bag for me. This is actually the first bag that I've purchased from another maker. And this is from Bobby. Uh, she runs the Inspired Knitting podcast and her shop on Etsy is called Sweet Comfort Designs. So when I saw her post on Instagram that she was launching her shop, I immediately ran over there because I saw she posted a picture of this one and I loved the I loved the fabric. So I was like, I need to have that. So I immediately went over to her shop and I purchased it. So super, it's like a really nice bag. It's got like a canvas bottom and a really sturdy handle on here and it's got purple it's a vibrant purple on the inside it's a perfect size for a hat project or a sock project and right now I have a hat in here so again I was going through my I was going through my stash and just I just want I just want to use up stuff that I already have and like to test out a, like different designs. Like I just go through my stash and see if I have something that'll work for a design I have in my head. Um, so you can't really see this. I'm holding, so this is Malabrigo Machida. I don't remember, it might be called Sandbank colorway, but it's really nice, like sandy color. And then I'm holding it with, I think this is Drops Alpaca Silk. Yeah, so Drops Alpaca Silk. There we go. So I'm holding it with that. And 
I, again, just kind of cast on a number of stitches. It might be too many. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a loose hat. <laughs> I should really do swatches. Uh, but anyway, so I, I just kind of, uh, let's see. So I saw a cable design that I liked, which is this one here. So I'm using that cable and then like a twisted cable or like not even a twisted cable. It's just twisted stitch. And then I had this wild idea to just kind of make up my own cable as I go along. You can, yeah, the mohair kind of makes it difficult to see, but I did do some sort of a intricate cable design on here that I did not write down. So I'm going to have to re not reverse engineer, but just read my knitting and figure out where I crossed my stitches, which way I cabled and which way I, because I knit two together and yarned over and slip slip knit and it was like a, it's, it looks, it's like a lacy cable design, but yeah, the, um, the mohair kind of makes it a little bit difficult to see. But yeah, so this is just, just something I threw on the needles just to have something different that I'm working on. I haven't picked it up for a couple of days though. I get, I'm too excited about some other things that I've got on the needles, but yeah, so I'll put the link to Bobby's shop down below. She's, I think she said that, uh, or she mentioned that she's got some more designs on the way for her bags. So I'm really excited to see what she has in store for that. And okay, no, I've got two more works in progress. So this one living in here, another bag that I, I made. This one is a test knit, which I signed up for two days ago. Uh, and I was super excited. Uh, so this is a test knit for Emily of High Fiber Knits. And she has a podcast of High Fiber Knits, which I'll link down below. Um, she's also a fellow Canadian. She lives back east in Ontario. And uh, she just posted a test knit call for her very first pattern. And that's always exciting to me, like when a designer or like when someone decides to start designing and they put out their first, uh, their first design, it's, it's always exciting. Like, I know it's like super nerve wracking because I remember my first design, I was like sweating bullets. I waited for weeks before I even attempted to like put it together <laughs> to publish it. Um, but anyways, so this is called, I... I believe it was, it's called the winemaker's hat. And this is how much I've done so far. So I just finished the brim. Oops, let me get that out of the way. So I just finished the brim. So this is, so I just um, folded it over and connected it. So now I'm working on the rest of the hat. I, I cast this on this morning. I got the email saying that I was accepted for the test knit at like 8.15 this morning. Um, and so I immediately wound up my yarn, made a swatch, and then cast on the hat. So really cool. It's like these like little vines that kind of look like grape vines. It's really cool. Really neat design so far. So I'm really excited. I'm probably going to finish. I want to say I'm going to finish this today because as soon as I'm done podcasting, I'm probably going to work on it. The yarn that I'm using is Estelle Llama Natural Chunky. So this is 20% llama and 80% merino. It's super duper soft. And I love, like, I love the feel of this and I'm excited to have another, another hat for the fall. So yeah, so super exciting. And also, um, on the note of High Fiber Knits, if you haven't checked her out, uh, she has a couple of episodes of her podcast up at the moment, and she also recently did, or like earlier, I guess in August, she did a pack with me, uh, or like what, what I pack on the way, like on vacation kind of thing, and she had the she had this brilliant idea of using one of these bento box, um, lunch boxes. And when I saw hers, I was like, Oh my gosh, I have the exact same one and I don't use it. And so what she did is she actually uses it as like a notions ca case. So like when you open it up, it's got like these trays that come out. So I've got like my, oh, I don't want to tip it over cause things will fall out, but I've got like my measuring tape. 
a pair of scissors, some progress keepers, a row counter or a stitch counter. I have my um, stitch markers in this little container here. And then in here I've got like some cable needles, some yarn for like provisional cast-ons. And then underneath here I have these other cases that I bought and they have like my cable stoppers or the, whatever they're called and some other random stuff. So I was like, wow, how brilliant of an idea is that? And so I immediately went and dug this out of the storage and yeah, turned it into my little notions. Well, yeah, notions case basically. So instead of having all this stuff kind of scattered around in different bags and stuff, now I have it all nicely tucked into this bento box. <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to share that because I thought it was so smart. <laughs> But yeah, so if you haven't checked out Emily's podcast, um, High Fiber Knits, I'll link it down below. Definitely check it out. Um, the last thing, the last work in progress, I think I mentioned earlier in the episode, is actually a crochet item. So it's been a long time since I've crocheted. Uh, I originally was a crocheter and I crocheted a bunch. Um, but then as when I started learning how to knit, I think it was like after a couple months of knitting, I put down the crochet hook and didn't look back <laughs> or haven't really looked back since then but uh, I'm starting to work on some um, projects for or like gift knitting I guess and I know when it comes to blankets I know crochet like I've knit a lot of crochet blank or I knit I have crocheted a lot of crocheted bl <laughs> that's kind of redundant <laughs> I've crocheted a lot of blankets and um, and I know how fast they can work up and so I bought some yarn. This is lion, no, not lion brand. This is Loops and Threads Soft and Shiny. So I got black and then I've got this kind of variegated purple, pink, and blue. And so I just do, I just cast on however many, or cat I hooked on, however many stitches. Uh, or a chance I chained. Oh my gosh, you can tell I haven't crocheted in such a long time. I'm forgetting my terminology. I just chained, um, I don't know, it was a multiple of whatever for the, for the chevron stitch. And I think I might have made it a little too wide. I'm going to have to buy some more yarn to finish this off. But I'm basically just doing a sh just a simple chevron. And it's just alternating black and then the variegated black variegated. I think it looks kind of cool it's going to be a gift. I think the person getting it will like it, will appreciate it because it's kind of like, it's got a pop of color, but then it's not like too wild. I didn't want to make the whole blanket the variegated because I think that would just be a little too loud. I like that the black kind of breaks it up. So yeah, so whenever I'm, whenever I find myself just sitting at my computer, like, I don't know, waiting, or not waiting, I was like, instead of browsing the internet, I'm like, oh, maybe I should pick up my, pick up my crochet and, you know, crochet a couple of rows on here because it goes by pretty fast. This morning I put on two rows. So, um, yeah, I'm really, yeah, it's kind of exciting to crochet again because it's, like I said, it's been a while and I think it looks, I don't know. I like, I like crochet chevron blankets. That's pretty much all I knit. Or, oh my gosh, I keep saying knit. That's all I, the, when it comes to crocheting blankets, I always do a chevron because I like that it keeps my interest. Um, I've not, I know a lot of people have done the crochet granny blanket or the granny crochet blanket where you're basically doing like the granny square style, like back and forth kind of thing. And I don't know, it just doesn't keep my interest as much as like doing a chevron because you're. Well, I mean, it's really not that whole lot different, but anyways, I just find it more, um, I don't know, entertaining to crochet. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but yeah, so I believe that's all my works in progress. Um, that's my whips, my FOs, my almost FOs. And so the only thing I have left now is my acquisitions and then admin section. So, uh, I'll quickly go through uh, my acquisitions here and then in the admin section, I'll talk about the giveaway winners. So this is 
like I mentioned before, Minute Cravings Rustic Twist base. So this base is unique in the sense that like it's 67% untreated merino and then 33% superwash merino. So two strands are untreated. I think it's like, what is it? Oh no, maybe it's, is it three? No, three strands? Two strands. So basically it's like, it's two thirds rustic and one third uh, superwash. And so it's got like, it has like a little bit of a rustic feel to it, but not, I don't know, like it's, it's, I would say like, it's not as super soft as a super wash merino wool, but it's not as rustic as like a 100% wool. It's like a nice step in between. So if you're looking for something that's in between, like if you want to graduate from super wash to rustic yarn, but you're not ready to make that big of a leap, I guess, this is a really great base to go with because you get a little bit of that super wash and then a little bit of the rustic wool. So I really like it. And the colorway I chose is called Pocket Watch, so it's a really nice gray. And it almost has, because of the way that the yarn is, it almost has a bit of a, uh, is it marl? Or barber pole? No, not really. Like, it's not, you can't really tell it's, like, that different. But, like, the coloring is different enough that, oh, I don't know if it's showing up on there. It gives it a little bit more depth, I would say. But yeah, so I, like I mentioned before, like I ordered six of these. I'm going to have, I'm definitely going to have one left over for sure. And probably a little bit of the fifth one. So I think I'm going to design a hat with the leftover one, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, so that's it for acquisitions. Um, yeah, so on to the admin section. Um, let's see, I have my notes somewhere here. Uh, where did I put... I'm missing things. Oh, here we go. Okay. So on to admin. Um, the giveaway winner from last episode. Uh, so what I was doing was um, doing a pattern giveaway each of my episodes through the summer. And so the winner from last episode is Hannah Jean Stitchery. Uh, she had a really nice comment that she left, and I'll have that on the screen here. Uh, so congratulations, Hannah Jean. Um, if you can contact me either on Instagram, Ravelry, or through email, uh, I will get the patterns, or like you get your choice of whichever pattern. And by the time this podcast is up, my Tassel Tango will be released as well. So you can have your choice of any of my previous patterns or my Tassel Tango pattern. So it's up to you. Um, but yeah, so that is that giveaway winner. And then the other thing is the six from Stash Make Along. Um, so I, I drew a winner. Yes. So what I did was the random number generator thing. And I did a number between two and nine, I think, cause there's, there's nine finished objects right now. So your chances of winning are pretty good. Um, so the winner of this draw for the six from Stash Make Along is post number eight, which was username SMN0423, who is also known as Sheila. Yeah, so Sheila, if you can get con if you can get into contact with me, either again through Instagram Ravelry or email, um, I will get your prize for you. Um, actually, I'll probably message you on on Ravelry because <laughs> I might as well. Um, but yeah, so that is. Yeah, so I'll get that prize set up for you. Um, the next draw for the six from Stash Make Along will be in November, I think. Let's see if I drew in September, then not October, then November. Yeah, so the next draw will be in November. So you have a very good chance of winning because there's not very many. Uh, there's only, what is it? There's eight finished objects so far. Um, so on the note of the six from Stash Make Along, um, that's running in the Ravelry group, in my Ravelry group, which I will link down below. Um, there is a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. And basically the gist of it is to use up, um, like the, the aim is to finish six objects from yarn from your stash, uh, before the end of the year. And if you make, if you do end up making six different, or if you end up completing six projects, then you're entered into like the grand prize giveaway, which I haven't quite figured out the prize for that yet, but I'm sure I'll have it figured out by the time I do the draw. <laughs> um, 
and I'm going to be drawing another winner in November and then a and then another winner in January along with if anyone finishes the six objects or the six projects then I'll draw a grand prize winner in January. So if you're interested in joining that more information on that is in my is in the Ravelry group and again the link is down below. Um, and then oh on the topic of sorry I keep looking over at my notes because I know I'm going to forget something. On the topic of make-alongs, um, I think I think what I might do because I'm I'm like really excited about the tassel tango and I really want to I don't know like I I do kind of want to make I mean I I do have another one on the needles but I kind of want to make another one <laughs> I'm like another one on top of that one so I was thinking uh, what I would do for the to kind of celebrate the release of the tassel tango shawl is start a tassel tango knit along in my Ravelry group. So if you're interested in doing a knit along for the tassel tango, I will be posting um, a thread for that in my in my Ravelry group. Yeah. So um, and then with that, it's just kind of like a um, like an open. I think it'll just be like an open like chatter sort of like poster like questions, post your your pictures, your progress, or anything like that. I'll just have like one thread with them. Um, and maybe I'll do a finished objects thread as well. But yeah, I'll have that run until maybe the end of October or November. I'll decide. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, so that's exciting. So again, the Tassel Tango is going to be released on Tuesday. So that'll be the day that this podcast goes up, hopefully. Um, the discount is 25% off until September 21st and no coupon code needed. It'll be applied at the checkout. And then yes, the Tassel Tango Knit Along will also be in my Ravelry group. So that's exciting. And then also one more thing that I wanted to mention before I hop off is hopefully, so Knit City is happening at the beginning of October. I think it's the first, yeah, the first weekend of October and I booked my hotel room. So, oh my gosh, I finally, finally did it. I booked a hotel room for Knit City. I've wanted to like for the last couple of years, but I've always missed out on the, like on booking with the hotel. It was always fully booked by the time I got around to it. And so this year I hopped right on and booked right away as soon as they announced it. <laughs> so I got a room. And I'll be going to Knit City for the Saturday and the Sunday. However, like the tickets for Knit City itself hasn't gone on sale yet, but I know I'm signed up for like the email newsletter and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to hopefully get tickets for both days. And hopefully, assuming everything goes well, um, Knit City will happen this year. It is a smaller version of Knit City. I think they're calling it Knit City Mini. So it is going to be like half the venue or like half the vendors that they normally have. So... If you're going to be in Vancouver in the beginning of October and you're going to Knit City, uh, yeah, it'd be really exciting to meet you and say hi. And if you have a tassel tango, we can exchange tassels. <laughs> That'd be really fun. So I think that what I, I think something that I plan to do for Knit City is like just have a bunch of extra tassels and just, if anyone has a question about, or like if anyone asks me about it, I was just like, Hey, here's a tassel. You can, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm getting too ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm just too excited. I'm like really excited about my tassel tango shawl. Um, but yeah, so yeah. So if you're going to be at Knit City, um, in October, first weekend of October, you know, come say hi. I am a little bit, I am a little bit shy in social situations, but like once I get talking with people and I'm okay. So if I seem a little like awkward or like shy, <laughs> like don't be surprised. Um, but yeah, no, once I start talking to people, it's, it, I, I start to get more comfortable and yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, hoping to podcast again in a couple weeks. Um, and then, and then, yeah, and then Knit City in October. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, whew, I feel like I should slow down and let myself breathe for a moment, <laughs> kind of rush through. Um, but then, yeah, anyways, uh, so I hope you guys are all doing 
doing great. Uh, I hope you guys had a great summer and looking forward to some sweater weather. I mean, I'm not, I don't want the cool weather quite yet. I mean, just squeeze a little bit of summer out, just a little bit more, <laughs> and then we can go into sweater weather. Um, but yeah, so it was so great to be here today. I'm so glad you guys came back and, uh, yeah, hope to see you again in the future. Happy knitting.